Weather Warriors, come on in. Come on in to the uh, State of the Weather show, episode 14. We're going to do something called your weekly outlook. So I'm going to talk about the storm systems that are going to track through the United States this week, the temperatures, the storm tracks. And I'm also going to show you a cool new website that you can use to track all of these models, all of their performance. So like how well is the models performing? We can look at that and we can play model psychologist and I think that's the future of meteorology so that's what I'm talking about in this episode before we start click the bell notifications we release weekly forecast breakdowns storm chasing events vlogs you know weather data visualizations tutorials all st stuff like that so hit the bell notifications hit subscribe bring a beverage these uh, episodes go really well with a nice warm beverage I like tea and uh, comment below how much snow you have I'm curious to see what everyone has so Let's crack right into it here. The site we're going to use today, the first site, is PivotalWeather.com. So you can click that, and you can follow along right with me. We're going to look at the temperatures and the precipitation forecast first. And if you didn't see my long-range forecast I put out about a week, two weeks ago or so, I was calling for very cold temperatures for this half of the United States and warmer conditions for that half. And it looks just like that's – whoops, whoa. I don't know what the heck happened there. That's exactly what's going to happen, and this is the CPC's forecast, so I, I agree with this for the most part. 80%, 90% chance you're going to get very cold temperatures out in that region and above average temperatures out to the west. You're going to get some troughing out here and some ridging out here, and our paint is going absolutely haywire. All right, so we'll look at the 6 to 10 day precip outlook. Above average in this area in green, below average out in this area in brown. When you get that ridging, the jet streams diverted up to the north. The storms are up to the north. You know, it can come kind of down like that. And your storms are going to be along that jet stream typically. So that's why you're going to get drier conditions under there. Now, there's going to be a lot of clippers that move through this region right here and this region as well. And that's why we're going to put above average uh, uh, precipitation out there. And you'll have another low pressure system kind of track up here. A couple of those bringing above average for the east coast. Now, let's go to this 168-hour uh, precipitation amounts, and this is several days out, and you're looking at at least an inch or so in this region right here, especially this right here, and a couple inches in some of those other areas as well, and a lot of that being snow uh, for this northern part. So lots of snow coming as well. So we're going to go over to the models now and look at the GEFS. This is the Ensemble American model. These are several different runs of the American model blended together, and so it averages things out. It's a little bit better for long-range forecasting because that's all we really want to look at. And so we're going to go to height anomalies here, the 500 millibar, just a little bit below the jet stream, and go up to the continental U.S. or the uh, yeah, we'll just go to North America here, and we'll click on loop. And we're going to look at the general uh, storm pattern. We look at that first, then we'll look at the storm systems with our, you know, like the, the radar and all that, the future radar as they call it. But uh, right now we got a big storm system in the central plains. This is bringing some snow for this uh, region right here. And uh, overall not too bad, but definitely some winter storm warnings, a couple blizzard warnings. But notice this ridging out here. This stuff is going to shunt its way east into the west coast of the United States. we got some high pressure or a low pressure out there in the upper levels, but lots of uh, high pressure out here, Canadian Arctic snowpack and stuff like that, starting to swirl and build. And you'll watch this area. It'll start to slide south. So these blue areas are you know lower pressures. It's going to be typically colder behind these blue areas. And so that's what you want to watch for in warmer conditions here. And then where the ISO or where the height lines are very packed together, where they kind of bend, that's kind of where your storm systems are going to evolve here, especially ahead of these troughs. So we're going to fast forward this, and you can see that starting to swirl and dive into the east coast of the United States as we get towards Thursday and Friday. And really cold, really cold, low height anomalies here in the east coast, northern United States. Um, really just east half as we get towards Thursday and Friday and this ridging is starting to nose into the western United States. Now what's going to happen here is when you get this kind of feature, you're going to get little uh, clipper systems that kind of track down 
on this side of the trough. Your big storms are typically over here on this side of the, the trough, but sometimes you can get clippers with, uh, with lift behind the trough as well. So you'll see a lot of uh, mini snow events that track through the plains, through the Great Lakes regions, and through the uh, northeastern United States. And so this is Saturday, Sunday, still kind of retains that look. Monday into next week, and so this is the next seven days, really a consistent pattern. Uh, this is Monday, and then as we get later into next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, this pattern starts to change. We'll make a separate video for that. But the general pattern for this next week is going to be troughing out here in the east coast and ridging out here in the uh, west coast. So the general look for uh, the, this winter, and uh, finally we're starting to get that pattern to set up. So temperatures, let's look at that, and then we'll look at the precipitation amounts. Uh, we'll do uh, two meter temperature anomalies. This is how much above and below average it's going to be. And uh, you can see these negative values are below average. These positive values are above average. And we'll fast forward it. This is Friday. So we're looking at 5 to 20 degrees below average in the Ohio Valley, parts of the East Coast, Midwest. And then out West, you're looking at Oh, about zero to five, maybe maybe slightly higher degrees above average. But the main story is going to be the cold. This is early next week into uh, late next week, and it starts to kind of change after about midweek next week. February could be a little bit warmer. We'll have to watch that. But like I said in the previous video, late January, early February, that's going to be very cold and a little bit more stormy. And then so we'll look at the total uh, precipitation amounts, and then we'll go over to snowfall and this is over the next week kind of similar to that earlier map I showed we'll look at the snow depth uh, real quick so this is how much snow is on the ground at once and uh, we'll fast forward it into next Monday not a whole lot of a change but you're gonna see a little bit of snow kind of in this region right here this is the area we're gonna want to watch over the next week or so so now we're gonna go over to the GFS and play it through, play all the storm systems through here. And we click on precipitation types right here, our precipitation type and rate. We'll get the deal handy dandy drawing tool out. And this is our storm system right now. And then after this, we'll look at the, uh, the performance, how confident are these models. So our low pressure system is kind of centered right here. Our cold front is going to kind of be down here. You see these thickness lines when they're tight together like that, that's where our cold front's going to be. You got plenty of cold air behind this. And you notice just behind that cold front, this 540 line right here is typically the, the line of where you're going to go from rain to snow. <clears throat> rain to snow, that first blue line. And that's where you see some snow out behind here. This storm has been very tricky for the models. You get these tight little tiny bands that are setting up all over the place. And uh, that's going to be a nightmare for uh, weather forecasters, local weather forecasters. But some areas in here, 4 to 6 inches, 6 to 8 than most areas being just like an inch or two. This is going to track east. There's a high pressure system here. This might, uh, it's kind of generally going to weaken though. So it will strengthen for a little bit, but then it's going to kind of weaken as it moves to east. You can see there's actually some snow behind it here as we get towards Thursday. Probably some thunderstorms out ahead of it. Low pressure systems here. Cold fronts way down there. This is going to die out when you see that cold front kind of drop off the, the low pressure system like that, you're going to see this thing start to die out here. And that's kind of what happens. It gets to the east coast, but generally just a long, elongated cold front. These typically aren't big winter events, even though you're going to get some decent snow here. You want this low pressure system to be more wrapped with a comma head if you want a good nor'easter. Now, out west, it's very uh, warm. you got a very strong high pressure system here. That's going to drag some very cold temperatures behind it. And the winds kind of follow these black lines. So plenty of wind that spills behind it from Canada. Going to be very cold as we head towards Thursday. Now watch what happens here. We get these little clipper systems. We'll go back. And we, I'll talk about the jet stream here. That jet stream is kind of like this. And when you, a little bit for a little further out here like this, and when you get that, you get these low pressure systems, these mini ones that scoop down on the other side of the jet stream on the back side. And here you got a little low pressure system, a little clipper that moves through. Lake effect snow out here. And each time these clippers move through, you can get an enhancement of that lake effect snow. 
got a high pressure system out here. Now watch what happens. This thing is going to strengthen these little low pressure systems. There's high pressure that's getting pushed into these lows. And this happens towards Sunday and Monday. <clears throat> and there you go, you get some strengthening. Strengthening right there. And so you're going to get some decent snow as we head towards early next week, the end of this week into early next week out there in the northeastern United States. Plenty of cold air out here. Another low pressure system that moves through. And uh, we'll track this forward into early next week. Monday, and this is getting pretty far out, but Tuesday, Wednesday, another system that tracks through more high pressure system. So you're going to get another cold shot next week, but then I think the pattern is going to change after midweek next week. But nonetheless, several uh, little rounds in there. And so how much snow is this predicting? Well, we'll go over the total accumulated snowfall for this time period. There's that first storm, generally three to six inches, a couple areas of six to eight. Let's see if I can scroll down here. Then our first clipper moves through, nothing bad. The next clipper moves through and it probably dumps another three to six inches for uh, the area's impacts. And then another one moves through another three to six inches. And so this kind of stacks up for uh, especially this region right here. And this model's got six to 12 inches, six to eight inches with those three clippers that move through. And then uh, for the Northeastern United States, another about six to 12 inches over the week from these little clippers and that first storm system. So decent snow. And then, you know, you look out west, just not a whole lot going on. Obviously some mountains, mountainous snow, maybe some snow for the southern U.S. with that first uh, storm system, but it's going to be quick and brief. Now we're going to go over to the model's uh, performance here. We're going to click on a model guidance. We're going to go to the GFS mean and spread, and you can see how well these things are uh, performing. I'm going to click on North America. And we're going to do something called, uh, let's do snow depth change mean. And we're going to loop all here. And what this is, is it's essentially, get this out here. We're essentially looking at how confident these models are. This is the snow depth, and this is the mean snow depth, and this is the range. So if you have six inches right here, that means... On the ensemble here, there's several different runs of the model. All of these uh, are essentially like there's a six inch spread between the different models. So that means it's kind of not sure what it's going to do. So some runs are maybe saying like eight inches and then some are saying two. There's a six inch difference. So these areas that kind of light up, there's going to be probably a lot of snow in those areas, but there's going to be a lot of uh, inconsistency. So we'll fast forward this. As you get towards the future, as you get towards next week, early next week, you can see that confidence that starts to drop off because the models drop off in confidence over time. And you can see as much as 12 to 15 inches of spread. For the northeast, you're looking at like 3 to 5 inches. Here, there's a lot of spread. There's a lot of uncertainty out here in Iowa in the Midwest. Then we'll look at one more thing. We'll look at the temperatures, and then we'll uh, continue this uh next week we'll fast forward it and you can see the spread one to two degrees kind of early this week and then as we get towards the late next week or late this week towards the weekend there's the spread kind of increases but here's the average temperature the average temperature is right here between all of these models all these american models negative 20 degrees negative 10 i mean it's very cold um you know i think this is yeah, that's uh, mean temperatures. And then the spread is going to be your color fill. It seems it's a little cold, but whatever. Your color fill is going to be in the blue here. And you can see 5 to 10 degrees. So there's a, still a little bit of uh, issues with confidence in that region right there. But overall, the average is going to be very cold in that region. But you can see as we get, f you know, as we head uh, towards next week, it kind of loses its confidence. You can see kind of where where the model is confident and where it's not. So like this area, it's pretty confident. It's pretty confident that it's going to be zero, the zero degree line is going to be right there. And I believe this is Fahrenheit. So, I mean, you look at that. So it's very confident here, but then it's not so confident out here. It could be a couple degrees above or below. And this is kind of where that rain snow line was. So there's still some question on the southern end of the storm whether there's going to be snow or not. So this is kind of a cool tool you can use. It's called NCEP. This is 
NOAA's kind of site for hosting the weather model. So with all that said, hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll do some more of these. This is kind of the first time running through this thing. And uh, we'll probably make them a little shorter in the future. Again, comment below how much snow you have. Hit the bell notifications. Subscribe. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And we'll see you soon.